Greetings, dear lords and ladies, and welcome to a new History Gaming Verified video. It's been a while again. I had to fix a few things with my soft and hardware, sadly. I also launched my Patreon site, as some people had been asking for one. Anyways, today we are finally taking a look at the father of one of the biggest video game action franchises of our time, and that is Assassin's Creed. The game depicts the so-called Holy Land during the Third Crusade, and especially a hidden conflict between the Assassins and the Templars. The Assassins fight for peace and freedom, while the Templars also strive for peace, though through oppression, force and total control about everyone's life. Of course, they are the evil guys. You play as Altair, a disgraced assassin who has to rise through the ranks of his brotherhood once more by killing Templar agents in the cities of Acre, Jerusalem and Damascus. So much for the basic information. Now the question is, how will I examine this game? Because of course I can't really examine the story as it is utter bollocks in terms of historical accuracy. Instead I will mainly focus on the open world experience, combat and such. So, let's start off with a small contradiction of what I just said and uh, add the story as the first negative point. <laughs> Meaning, it does not support a historical authentic experience at all. This is not only uh, due to all the space alien stuff going on, it is also because of the depiction of certain characters. Some like Konrad of Montferrat, uh, sorry, the German term would be Konrad of Mon uh, von Montferrat. Mm -hmm. are displayed as young and energetic while actually being almost 50 years old and, according to sources from the time, an old man. Others, such as King Richard I of England, the famous Lionheart, are shown as very noble, considerate and honorable, which in Richard's case is pretty far from the truth. He was definitely an excellent military leader, an efficient diplomat and politician, but at the same time known as being extremely brutal, shrewd and putting political and personal gains much above any thoughts of honor. In game he is very angry about Conrad of Montferrat killing more than 2000 prisoners of war, while in reality he ordered this massacre to himself. Now on the positive side of things is certainly the basic world you play in. The three cities of Acre, Damascus and Jerusalem, plus the castle of Masyaf. While the cities are not completely correct in terms of size and layout, famous buildings and architectural landmarks have been placed more or less correctly and look very similar to their real-life counterparts. Though in some cases a few liberties were taken. In the case of the castle of Masyaf, it is depicted more or less correct, but in reality it does not lie in a steep ravine and it was only one of multiple fortresses of the assassins, though the most important one in the region and more or less their capital. A huge negative point is the low variety of weapons you encounter on your enemies. These are only armed with swords and sometimes bows. You never face spears, shields or crossbows, despite them of course being in use during the crusades. Also, you won't face any horse-mounted enemies, despite those being the defining factor of the time. No knights charging you with their lance aimed at your heart, no Arabian archers shooting at you from horseback. This is definitely caused by a limitation of development funds and time, as the engine is able to portray such AI opponents. In later games that are based on the same engine, these weapons, save for shields, are displayed and used by the enemies. Shields have only been implemented in Assassin's Creed Origins, if I recall that correctly. On the other hand, some limitations make sense. Wielding a pole arm inside a city is really inconvenient, as these are unwieldy while fighting in narrow, cramped alleys, under canopies and in crowded areas. Shields, on the other hand, are heavy and tiresome to carry if strapped to your arm. As you mostly fight inside the cities against patrols and guards, it is reasonable these are not carrying shields with them all the time. 
Some men could have had the shields strapped on their backs, but of course it would have been impossible to unstrap them quickly. An interesting thing is the actual combat of the player character against the AI opponents when you take into consideration the armament used and the armor the enemies wear. The most common enemies of both the Crusaders and the Saracens only wear padded or light lamella armor that should easily be pierced or cut by sufficiently sharp swords and short swords. Another case are the more elite sergeants, equipped with chainmail or medium lamella armor. It is relatively difficult to cut through these, but as long as the blade is just sharp enough to bite properly into the armor, but not too sharp, so it does not crack, and wield it with sufficient force, it should work. Stabbing, especially, should also work if the sword has a proper point and you get enough force behind it. So at least this kill move <laughs> would most likely not work. A special case are the different swords Altair uses throughout the game, as curved swords are significantly worse at piercing armor when stabbing, though it is probably still possible for a highly skilled and strong swordsman. For the last and most elite enemies sporting partial plate, heavy mail and lamella armor, a lot of the kill moves become very unlikely. Especially cutting would most likely not work anymore and stabbing would be very difficult if not aimed at weak points such as the ankles or the throat. As some of the combat moves are aiming specifically at these less protected or vulnerable body parts, they are still feasible, but special kill moves for high level enemies would have probably been better. During the research for this specific topic that I already discussed a bit on the evaluation livestream, I actually learned a thing or two about the change in SWAT characteristics throughout the Middle Ages, especially that they continuously became less sharp, but bigger and heavier, the thicker and, th and stronger the armor got, until they were less more than huge, uh, two-handed, slightly sharpened clubs that even knightly nobles often exchanged for halberds and similar armor-piercing and or bone-breaking heavy pole arms and morning stars. As the game depicts a somewhat transitional phase with partial plate armor slowly showing up, a few inconsistencies are acceptable, especially if you consider the age of the game. But overall, my point with the special kill moves for high level enemies stands. For the short sword though, I'm largely satisfied, even with the combat against late game opponents. As most attacks with it aim for weak points, like steps through the neck, or slashes against the throat. Only the step right into the chest is not really feasible. Another thing about the combat are non-lethal but crippling wounds and blocking or well, precisely parrying. For the wounds it is quite realistic. The main character Altair does not necessarily go for a killing strike. He also steps or cuts his enemies through the knee or thigh, breaks their arm or, without even using his weapon, apparently breaks their necks. He also throws them into structures that collapse upon them and against walls to knock them down or even out. After combat you might then sometimes notice a few of your enemies are actually still alive and moaning because of their pain. If this wouldn't be enough, you're actually able to silence them permanently with your hidden blade, uh, though this does not impact the game in any way. This gives the combat a nice, authentic feeling. The same is true, at least for me, someone who has so far only watched fights and some historical European martial arts clashes and didn't have the time or money to actually do it himself, uh, for blocking and parrying. It seems more realistic than in most movies and games. Usually enemies and your own character try to deflect blows instead of simply parrying them with the blade, even dodging some blows and sometimes slapping the enemy in the face or against the chest in return. Grappling looks a bit unrealistic, but pushing enemies to the side or throwing them to the ground is certainly not unrealistic. Of course, the whole combat, especially against multiple enemies, is far too slow. And when you fight more than one opponent, the others often wait for you to finish off your current target and don't try to intervene, something that is not authentic at all. Let's take a look at ranged combat. 
While the AI uses bows for this, the only weapon the player character, Altair, utilizes is the throwing knife. This is actually not that wrong. A few medieval sources write the main weapon of the assassins was the knife or dagger, which they were also able to throw precisely. Altair exclusively aims for the throat with his knives and is incredibly accurate with them, to the point that it is entirely unrealistic again. Also, he is able to take out most enemies with a single hit, something that should not be possible with uh, heavily armored opponents, especially knights with great helms that also cover their throat, at least partially. By the way, in the opening cutscene of the game you see Altair armed with a crossbow. This was removed from the game for historical reasons, as the crossbow apparently only became a weapon of war for Near East factions well after the Third Crusade. A really nice detail are the different building styles. Acre being the only Christian ruled city in the game and having been only recently conquered back from the Muslims after a long siege, shows significant damage of the city walls and the poor district. On top of that, a lot of the undamaged buildings show a major European influence in their building style. As Acre had been under Christian control for 80 years until Salah ad -Din captured it back two years prior to the events in Assassin's Creed. Even today, Acre sports an interesting mix of building styles, so the city's look might be more or less authentic for the time, as it was later heavily destroyed and rebuilt in a more oriental style with still some European elements. Jerusalem shows far more oriental influence, strikingly similar to the way the older parts of the city look today. Despite that, some European looking buildings can still be found in the cityscape. Contrary to that, Damascus is completely devoid of such buildings making it look like an authentic oriental city. A last point that is not really historical, but authentic, the crowd. Something I love about the game are the civilian NPCs roaming the streets. While the variation of NPC models is not very high, the cities feel densely populated and sometimes really crowded. This really helps creating a good immersive feeling. All right, it's time for the summary. Cities, historical buildings and landmarks are largely depicted accurate. The limitation to few weapon types makes sense inside cities, because some weapons are not really well suited for fighting inside cities. Generally, sword and short sword fighting is more or less realistic. The player character uses the environment in combat. Um, he often inflicts crippling wounds instead of killing blows and deflects attacks instead of straight on parrying them. The various different cultural influences and contemporary events have a visible impact on the cities and the buildings and the general style of the world. And you have a nice, immersive, crowdy feeling inside these cities because of the large population roaming the streets. On the other hand, you have the completely nuts storyline. Yes, I said I shouldn't mention it, but at least a bit. The historical characters are depicted wrongly most of the time in their apparent character and their appearance. Some of the locations are not really authentic. You have a very low weapon variety. You're not only fighting inside the cities, you're also fighting outside in the open world. Uh, it is completely devoid of any mounted enemies in the age of crusaders, knights. Um, armor has no influence whatsoever on damage and kill moves. Enemies just stand by and watch while you finish their comrades off. And the throwing knife is far too accurate and far, far too deadly against heavily armored enemies. In total, Assassin's Creed does a good job at creating an immersive medieval Third Crusade era world with beautiful cities and an incredible view, especially from points higher up. Because of this, the inconsistencies are so much worse 
Ubisoft was on a good way to create a great experience and Assassin's Creed still is a good game with that you are absolutely able to have lots of fun. It just is neither authentic nor accurate in one of its major game mechanics, the combat. A game set during the Third Crusade without mounted knights and special combat moves to take down heavily armored enemies? Something of a waste, isn't it? This means this otherwise really good game can only get one rating. Not approved. Alright. Now, I have this small problem of not really knowing which game to cover next, so feel free to post any ideas in the comments. By the way, Patreons will be able to vote, suggest or even request games I should cover in the future. So maybe that's something for you. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, consider to subscribe or maybe even support me via Patreon. If you want to see other videos from this series, click right here. And for the Weapons Verified series, here. All the best and see you on the next video.